lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing fine. How are you? Pretty good. So, as a follow-up to last week, I never got sick. Ah, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, I have forgotten you were on the verge of being sick. <laughs> well, I wasn't entirely... Well, I, yeah. I had a fever spike one day, and that was it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. You probably had the COVIDs. Yeah, well, maybe. That's, that's about how the Omicron works. Yeah. I uh, I definitely should have gotten a test then, because um, that would make uh, visiting my cousin in Europe easier. <laughs> yeah, right. show a ha, positive, Have that on record. <laughs> yeah, a positive COVID test from within six months or whatever. I was hoping to go to U.S. I was hoping to go to Switzerland and like... May-ish, maybe. Well, hopefully they're rolling the stuff back. Maybe it won't be a thing by then. Yeah, it's, um, I, you know, something, I'm, I don't know if we talked about it on the last podcast, but uh, you were saying to me, um, certainly off off the mic, um, that, uh, and I've come around to this, well, it's not like I doubted that you were right. It's just like, it has become more apparent to me since you said um, that there are a lot of people that are really invested in this yeah. and they're not letting it go. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth, man. And, um, so, I, you know, I was thinking about why it's like, it's just that it's really hard to admit that you've been duped. Right. Yeah. I mean, like that's really what it is for, I a mean, a lot of people. For, yeah. For politicians and so forth. It's because like of the benefits you get from keeping people scared and, oh, yeah. um, and, and, you know, same with the media that kind of thing. But for average people, it's really about not wanting to admit that you've been fooled, yeah, right? Exactly. You you followed the rules the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember uh, a while back, somebody close to me um, uh, got COVID and um, she like yelled at me and she was like, you know, seemed upset about it. And so I was like, you know, this isn't your fault. Like there's not, yeah, nothing you could do the per- yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and she like yelled at me and she's she said I know it's not my fault it's the stupid people that aren't following the rules. <laughs> yeah, like Always. well, it's not I, their I fault mean, either. For the record, <laughs> I, I just want to point out that I'm not sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, exactly a rule follower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm pretty sure she was talking specifically, specifically to, to me. you. Yeah, yeah. All right. That, um, that was <laughs> like, no, nah, I, you're, you're the one that's sick. I'm not sick, but right. it didn't seem like the appropriate time to say that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, um, anyway. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, I mean, where is she now? Like, how does she feel now that all these things that I, cause we argued about this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so, and I don't talk to her anymore, but, uh, not because of that. Um, but anyway, um, where is she now that all of this stuff is falling apart? And it turns out that I was right about all of this. The science has changed. There's yeah. no way you could have known TV didn't tell you all of that. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no way, way you, could've you, could've known. Could, you couldn't be right about that. Somehow I knew. <laughs> yeah, somehow a lot of people knew. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, you know, and and I get the the science is changing or the science has changed like it does. Right? Well, it does. Yeah. yeah. And and um, and that's what's part of frustrating to me about all of this is yeah. that they're like so forever It's like we, they finally came around to recognize what science is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what's upsetting me cuz yeah. we've been saying this the whole time like this you're not following the science. Science yeah. changes, but but now when it's convenient, mm-hmm. it's changing. Yeah. So Well, it it's I mean, it's hard. You can only ignore the data for so long. And there's still plenty of things that they're ignoring the data about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like N- New York, uh, for example, is um, lifting the uh, mask mandates for indoor dining and stuff like that. Yeah. But they're still requiring it in the schools. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. W- what? And, and it, I. You mean so it. It doesn't work in a restaurant, but it works in a classroom. Yeah. And then you have, of course, you have the counterpoint of Sweden that um, kept their schools open the whole time. No social distancing, no masks, no worse. They're fine, yeah. I think it was what the North Dakota that kind of did the same thing. South Dakota. South Dakota. South Dakota never had any restrictions at all. Yeah. Just fine. Like, yeah. Just plugging on along. I don't know. Well, um, and so that, uh, you know, that's really what we wanted to talk about tonight is uh, how things would have been different. Like, what what would a, a libertarian administration have done differently? 
Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's not, <laughs> the more I thought about this, I was like, wow, it's not so much what a libertarian administration would have done. It's what they wouldn't have done. Well, the noteworthy stuff is the stuff that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, if you think back to that time when all of this first started, I remember there were some articles put out and I saw some things where they were like, yeah, like this is the reason libertarianism won't work because it, it, in a pandemic or when you have to have everybody do something, you've got to have government control and libertarians just aren't for government control. Yeah. But the truth is, is we would have had the right answer all along because you wouldn't have the divisiveness that you have now mm -hmm. between everybody because everybody would have been able to do what they thought was right. Yeah. Like if you thought it was serious enough, you needed to stay home or you needed to wear a mask or any of these multitude of things that were mandated, you just would have done it on your own. You wouldn't have had the government standing over you forcing you to do it. Yeah. Um, and, which is the right call. Like, free people should be able to make decisions for themselves. Yeah, and that's the that's the fundamental starting point. Um, it, like, you mentioned that, well, you have to have government to step in and tell everybody what they need to do to protect themselves. I mean, that it, the fundamental assumption there is that people can't make good decisions for themselves, that you need some kind of, Well, and that the, the decisions that are being made for you are the right ones. Because exactly. Because those you decisions some, are being made by people, too. Some intelligentsia elite that knows yeah. what's best for you. Yeah. Um, and the fundamental uh, premise of libertarianism is that the best answer is always to let people make their own decisions about their lives. Yeah. That they know best what's good for them. Exactly. And even if they're wrong, like... So what? That's yeah. <laughs> they, then they they reap the consequences yeah. of that. But you also get to see who's right and who's wrong and change your behavior to match what you the outcomes that you want. Exactly. Yeah. And I think if we had had our way with this, that for one, this would have been over way sooner. Yeah, it may it, never have been a pandemic. Yeah, I mean, exactly. never have been called a pandemic. Yeah, you know? exactly. I, I'm still not convinced that it really was in the sense. I mean, it was it was in the sense that it it certainly was a. Um, international illness that affected a lot of people. Yeah. That's yeah. certainly true. Oh yeah. Um, so in the strictest sense, it was, it was a pandemic at some point. Yeah. Um, I, I am not convinced that it was ever dangerous enough to warrant to the general population to, yeah, yeah to warrant. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the kind of you think back to when it all first started, when, um, was it Greece where it hit so hard? Uh, Italy. Italy, that's right. It was Italy. Mm -hmm. Where the, um, yeah, where it just, and that's, that got my attention at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, like we do not want that to happen here. Yeah. Like, and, you know, with, and I was willing to take reasonable precautions to make sure that wouldn't happen here. Mm -hmm. um, that's the whole two weeks to slow the, what was it? Flatten the curve. Two, two weeks, weeks to flatten, flatten the, the curve. curve. Like, I wasn't for enforcement. Rather than two years to ruin your life? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and I, like I say, I was, I was okay with that being recommended. Like mm -hmm. that being the message, hey. Well, I mean, that's exactly the point, though, right? Is yeah. that um, that you saw a danger and you didn't need to be forced to take some precautions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, you you saw a danger and you're going to take precautions to protect yourself and your family. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't need government to tell you to do that. Well, and there you go, and that's really kind of the point. And you've seen what's happened since then. Like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, that that's literally where it started, and look at where we've ended up. Yeah. You know, two years later, we're still having these debates and having these fights. And mm -hmm. it's because it was it was top down from the government. Yeah. Well, um, all right. Let's let's take some of these points uh, bit by bit. Um, first off, with a, in a more libertarian world, there wouldn't be a centrally controlled narrative. Um, no, no centralized messaging, which to freak everybody out. Yeah. Like all those hypochondriacs out in the world, like myself, yeah. um, being told over and over again with death tickers in the corner of every screen and, and all that stuff. Like yeah. it gets to you even when you know oh, yeah. better. I mean, like a few months into that thing, like I had done enough reading to know that it wasn't that dangerous, but it still got in my head. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I know that I wasn't the only one. There's still people well, that, that freak out about like, all those people that I see walking down the street or the lady that walks in the neighborhood for exercise and wears a mask and walks well around me if I pass her, what, like... Yeah, 
the, the, the propaganda has worked. Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't need to do that. She can't get COVID from me passing outdoors. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I'm out there walking, you know, I can't possibly be that sick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> to begin with, yeah. Um, the COVID is everywhere, Mike. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but I've seen people do that. I oh, mean, there oh, is oh. a lady in my neighborhood uh, who dude, like, I work walked with the... in the road to not pass me on the sidewalk. I work with the public, man. I see all types, like, mm-hmm. and there's plenty of them still out there, like, yeah. and but they they've bought into the to the messaging, yeah, you know. Um, well, and and that's it. There wouldn't have been centralized messaging in that way. Um, you would have a more competitive environment for media, yeah. Because um, right now the the competition is who can get access, and the way to get access is to say the, the yeah say yeah. the right thing, yeah. Um, and and that's really what it's about now, you know, to 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 get the information, um, you have to do what the government wants so that you can get the information that the government wants to leak to you so that you can leak it out to the public. Yeah. That's really what, that, what that's the game mainstream media is now. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think that that would exist in a libertarian world. I mean, partly because the government just doesn't ha- wouldn't have the same kind of power. Yeah. Um, and uh you know, I, I, I pine for the, the old days of journalism all the time. And yeah. that's why I have such great respect for Matt Lee that we played all those clips from last week, yeah. is that he's an old school journalist that still pushes to get the answer. Yeah, an actual um, answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and doesn't just, you know, stick to the line that, that he's being fed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in a, in a world of private journalism then everybody's trying to dig down to the truth. And the way you make your career is by getting it right, yeah. not by doing what you're told. Yeah, breaking the big story that mm-hmm. that nobody else saw coming. Or, yeah. You know. Or, you know, just being accurate and truthful and yeah. genuine. And building a reputation of somebody yeah. that, that's legitimately trying to get to the bottom, kind of mm-hmm. like Joe Rogan. Well, I mean, I don't even consider him a journalist. I don't journalist. consider him a journalist, but that's the reason he has such a following that he does mm-hmm. is because people know that he's not lying to them. Yeah. Like he's, he, I mean, he may not have all the answers. He may not get everything right. And I don't think he does get everything right. Yeah. But, you know, I think he's genuine mm-hmm. and he's he's trying to get to the, to the bottom of what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I think of people like Matt Lee, Glenn Greenwald, yeah. uh, Matt Taibbi, um, Aaron Mate, uh, um, uh, Blumenthal, uh, I can't think of his first name a- anyway. Like yeah. there's, there's, there's still some of these guys there. out and there. And most of those guys are hard leftists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, Which is kind of crazy, but, but their reporting is fair. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they're really digging for the digging truth. for the truth. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, they're not just out there trying to be propagandists. They're trying to be journalists. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of the, the, the core, a lot of these things is going to be no centralized something. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so uh, you, you wouldn't have the, um, the federal power over business to create the kind of threats to businesses to enforce the mandates. Yeah. Um, so that, that essentially there wouldn't have been mandates handed down to these businesses about what they need to do to enforce on behalf of the federal government yeah. that wouldn't exist in a, in a well and once world. again the the businesses would make the best decision for their business and for their customers exactly because at the end of the day that's what a business is trying to do mm-hmm. is is what's best for their customers yeah and and on top of that um you wouldn't have had uh this big um, welfare system providing unemployment payments that were greater than uh, any kind of payments that people would have gotten to continue working. Exactly. And and, and if you think that, that, well, I mean, so there's an argument certainly to be made that if a government destroys your job, then they owe you something. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to... I wouldn't I, argue gonna, against yeah, that. I'm not yeah. going to take on that argument because um, yeah. I, I, I don't have a strong argument against it. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, certainly the unemployment payments encouraged employees not to work. Um, and then on top of that, like if you think that it was a good thing, look at inflation now. Yeah, well, um, exactly. Because that's part of the, the we're side paying effect. The, we're yeah. paying the price of that in real time here. I, exactly. Um, so on that point, actually, you wouldn't have had all the money printing to – and to do what it really did, which was to prop up the stock market, to enrich the bankers and the politically connected. Oh, yeah. um, like there was plenty of money going out to average Americans at the time, but it was to make up for all the money that they'd taken away. Well, and 
and then we talked about this at the time and broke down the numbers, and I don't remember them offhand now, mm -hmm. but of how much of those stimulus checks actually went to people oh, yeah. versus what went to just special interest. Yeah, it was less than half. Oh, yeah, substantially, as I remember. Oh, like yeah. I say, I don't remember the numbers. Um, I, yeah, I don't remember exactly. They're in the other notebook that's behind me, but uh, and I, the chances of me finding them... Digging them kinda, out, yeah. yeah right. um, I didn't... I didn't, uh, you know, good. I didn't put good headers on the pages, yeah. um, so it's hard to find things. But, um, but yeah, it was like less than half of the stimulus went to uh, to regular people. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, it comes back to that same thing that we talk about inflation all the time, which is um, when the money's printed and put out there, the first people to get it get the most value out of it. Yeah. Um, less than half of that went to average Americans and it's, and that's of the stimulus checks at the same time, you still had the federal reserve propping up the stock market and, and oh, so yeah. forth. Um, and so what it really does is that it gave, it created an opportunity for wealthy elites to increase their wealth, um, in the short term, uh, by a, far greater degree. Now they're paying for inflation too. Yeah. Um, but by a far greater degree than the average American and the inflation doesn't affect them this much anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, essentially you paid your government to pay you a little bit and pay all these people that already had a lot of wealth a lot. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, and then of course, you know, if you got employees that, uh, aren't incentivized, um, to not work. And this is, you know, there were a lot of young, healthy people that didn't really have anything to worry about, um, statistically speaking, yeah. from coronavirus that sat home for a long time. Oh, yeah. For a year. <laughs> Spent yeah. a year at home. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's a whole lot of productivity that didn't go into the economy. Yeah. Uh, it was a complete waste. And I'm sure that there would have been people that were afraid to, to go to their job at the supermarket or whatever. Yeah. Um, but there would have been a whole lot more opportunities. And at some point, like money talks. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, just think about it as being like hazard pay. Yeah. yeah. You know, if there's a real concern, which lasted for some time, yeah. mostly because of that centralized messaging, it wouldn't have been as, as severe in yeah. a libertarian society anyway. But, um, yeah. even assuming that it was, yeah. um, the, you know, your employers have the opportunity to offer bonuses, to offer higher wages, et cetera, to, to, to bring keep, people in. Well, to keep the doors open. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's that's what would cause them to want to do that is the mm -hmm. fact, oh, man, we can't find people because this is such a dangerous time we're living in or whatever. Yeah. We've got to do something to get, get people to come out. And, and the things that you never saw, too, um, like we did see that that the lockdowns and, and so forth forced innovation from companies to try and keep their doors open. Yeah. Um, like it is a whole lot easier to go pick up food now than it has oh. ever been before <laughs> yeah. or to have food delivered to your house than it's ever been before. And I think that yeah. that's great. That um, was, that was so that that's an interesting aspect too, because that was coming one way or the other. That's true. Um, but man, it accelerated when when covid started like that's yeah. a pe businesses that were that was a small part of their business that mm -hmm. became the business yeah for a, a couple of or, or over a year yeah you know? yeah absolutely um but there was uh, there was if you hadn't had the idea of an essential business yeah. where businesses were were being forced to shutter yeah. um then there could have been a lot of innovation to cope with uh, a virus from a lot of a lot of other industries as well, yeah. like stuff that we'll never see because they never got the opportunity to try and figure it out. They were yeah. just closed. They just shut down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and of course it, you know, another side effect of that um, is that there was a whole lot of smaller businesses, family owned or small, you know, um, regional uh, or. Regional seems bigger than what I mean, but, yeah. uh, you know, um, businesses that will never reopen, yeah. that were closed down and will never reopen, and their market share was shifted to the biggest companies in this country. Yeah, we talked about it at the time, once again, I think, but a lot of money was funneled into big companies through this whole ordeal. Yeah. And, and that's because your government said, you can't, yeah, these places can't open, but these places can. Yeah. Picking winners and losers, more mm -hmm. or less. Well, exactly. That's exactly yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, and and this one can't be ignored. 
um, just in terms of the healthcare effects of, of all of this. Uh, you wouldn't have had, um, well, you would have a free market for healthcare. Yeah. So prices would be down and quality would be up to start with. I, I'm not <laughs> going to make that argument again right now. You know, yeah, yeah. It, um, we'll, I'm sure we'll come back to it and we've had plenty of episodes on it in the past, but, um, the, the main thing is that there would have been a lot more hesitancy to put out vaccines that are as, that are as ineffective as these seem to be. Yeah. Um, there would have been a lot more hesitancy to repackage remdesivir, um, the, the toxic drug that didn't work well enough to, to treat Ebola, <laughs> yeah. um, that they repackaged to treat coronavirus and are apparently still giving to people, even though it's, it's poison. Yeah. Um, there would have been a lot more opportunity to test uh, whether some inexpensive uh, interventions like um, ivermectin or uh, hydroxychloroquine or zinc or vitamin C infusions or like all of these other things um, that were kind of poo pooed from the very beginning because they you couldn't charge enough for yeah. it, really. Cause, well, because the pharmaceutical companies wouldn't make enough money off mm -hmm. of it, you know. Um, so that that would that would have been limited. It would have been a more competitive environment for uh, among pharmaceutical companies, and they would have been just trying to find an answer. Because if you can find the answer first, yeah. even if you can't charge a lot for it, you yeah. can make a lot off of it. Exactly. Um, exactly. Certainly enough to to justify your time in there. Yeah. And um, and and once again, it, you can't. You've got to remember that in in this environment, companies would be more incentivized to take care of their customers. Exactly, because you don't have guaranteed payments or liability protections for these pharma companies. Exactly. So, I mean, they they would much more be incentivized to do the right thing. Yeah. Because they're it. not right now. Like, don't, yeah. make no mistake. Talk FDA and all of that stuff all you want. Those aren't incentives to do the right thing. They're mm -hmm. all working together. Yeah, they're bureaucracies to negotiate and to negotiate with. Exactly. That's really what it is. It's yeah. it's a, a it's another way of lining pockets. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, so you wouldn't have all these protections for these companies. The any vaccines that would have been produced and put out there. Um, would have been thoroughly tested and yeah. the safety concerns would be out there. Yeah. Like you, they would be available to you. Yeah. Um, not like now where you have to dig and dig and dig and you still can't find the stuff. You just, you gotta, yeah. you gotta go by, uh, independent studies yeah. that have come out well after the fact, but, uh, companies wouldn't have been incentivized to, to put a product out on the market that they weren't sure about the safety of because they wouldn't have been protected from the liability of any damages caused. Yeah, Exactly. If something bad happened and they put out a bad, a bunch yeah. of people start having heart attacks or dropping dead on a soccer field. Yeah. Like there'd be repercussions for or, that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, Pfizer withdrew their request for emergency use authorization for the vaccines for under fives. Oh, yeah, they did. Man. Um, and I'm. And, I and watching watching the news coverage of that, by the way, was just sickening, by the way. Because yeah. they, they pull these people out that have been just completely consumed by the narrative they're like oh we're just so disappointed i can't believe my five-year-old can't get the shot now yeah and it's like we've been waiting for this for so long and it's it's just oh. yeah, because they have no way of assessing risk because the the safety stuff isn't out there i mean i, I think that it's clear at this point that for young children um the risk of myocarditis or pericarditis is higher than the risk of coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've, I mean, I think that's with or without the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the risk yeah. of coronavirus with or without with the or, vaccine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The benefits from the vaccine don't outweigh the risk you're going to take as far as like yeah. other health issues from the vaccine. So let's mess with my kid's heart in the hopes that he doesn't get a really bad cold. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't have that problem. And, and I think, you know, Pfizer was playing the odds here. I think that they were like, okay, is the amount of money we can make off this greater than the, the public, um, distrust that we might generate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that in a, in a, um, a more competitive market after all of this, 
Yeah. Some of these companies would be would have a much smaller market share than they did going into it. Yeah. I think Pfizer would be in trouble in a in a more free market system um, yeah, yeah. if they did if they did with the mRNA vaccine in a more free market system what they did in this system. Yeah. Oh, I um, I absolutely think that's true. But they'll be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean they've got I mean they've got all the support they need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, but that's a, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, just that right there is a huge difference. And, um, you wouldn't have the centrally controlled, uh, healthcare system that is, you know, the CDC that's passing down the protocols. Yeah. Um, now while not all, all, uh, healthcare providers are following those protocols, most are yeah. because that's actually their best liability protection is to just do what the CDC says. Yeah. Um, because but, if something bad happens, they will be, well, that was the, that was the science of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you can always blame the, the federal government and the federal government can't be sued. So oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, then, uh, but you would have had a lot more experimentation, um, by, uh, doctors and healthcare facilities. Uh, I think that you would have, well, there's no doubt in my mind that there would have been very quickly, found a few um intervent interventions that were effective yeah yeah and quickly been adopted yeah and th and they would have spread yeah um it would have spread around what was working and uh and you know that's just that's just one of the advantages that you have um with a, a bunch of different people trying to solve the same problem yeah in an open market in an open market yeah yeah um so that's a that's a lot of it right there yeah. Um, I, I think that it's, you would have found an answer to the problem quicker. Um, it would have been less expensive for everybody. Uh, you would have been free to make your own choices about your life the entire time. Yeah. Um, you uh, would have been able to keep your businesses open. Uh, you would have been able to walk around without uh, like inner stores without putting a mask on or, or not. Or uh, whatever you want to do. You know, you know. Um, but uh, <laughs> and, and you're right. The divisiveness wouldn't have been created. It, it yeah. became a very like the, the way to respond to coronavirus in this country became a highly political thing to the point where it wasn't long before wearing a mask could pretty easily identify your political affiliation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's not following the science. I'm yeah. sorry. Like that's, and, and that's in an already divisive political climate. So yeah. then you had this like, open. it would have been like, <clears throat> it was like the Crips and the Bloods. Yeah. That's a good example. Yeah. yeah. Is it like the blues and the reds yep. out there wearing their sign on their face so that you knew whether they were on your team or on the other team, which team they're on. And, exactly. um, and, and it created a lot of, uh, well that and the, the threats to businesses to f enforce the mandates, yeah. um, created a lot of antagonistic interactions between normal people. Yeah. That otherwise wouldn't have existed. Yeah. So, um, and then finally, I guess, um, there would have been the school thing that's yeah. still going on. Oh yeah. Um, like I said at the beginning, Sweden kept their schools open the entire time. No masking, no, or no mask mandates. I'm not yeah. saying that nobody wore masks, but yeah. no mask mandates. Um, no, uh, um, distance. I, I used the right term at the beginning and now it slips my mind. The um, uh, social distancing. Social distancing. Yeah. yeah. Um, no social distancing and they did fine. Yeah. They did fine. Yeah. Um, so what that says is that all of these requirements on schools were t completely unnecessary. All the distance learning, um, all the shutdowns, uh, the big delays. And I, I cannot stress enough how irritated I am um, every time I see a child with a mask on. Yeah. I, it, it really, like, they're the parent. They get to make the decisions for their child. It's not my place to step in and, and say anything. But, oh, man, do I want to. <laughs> well, I, like, to, me, because, to me, it border, and, and it's a borderline, but it borderlines on child abuse. Yeah. I mean, my brother was telling me that, uh, that my, my oldest nephew, um, who's four, uh, he's like, well, the mask doesn't really bother him because the whole time he's been in school, he's been required to wear a mask. That's even and, worse. And yeah, and that, to me, it's like that's, that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. That's a yeah. terrible thing, actually, that he's been trained that this is how you're safe in public. Now, yeah. he's a 
really well adjusted kid actually and like yeah. it's not like he gets scared about seeing people's faces yeah, he'll or be anything fine. like that but but there's um, plenty that won't be yeah yeah i mean i i have certainly heard stories about um about children who freak out when they see somebody's face now yeah in public yeah, yeah. Maybe in private. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Depending you know, on the situation. Like, I, you could, yeah, I'm sure that there are families out there that they wear masks in the house. Yeah. You remember when Fauci was saying if you have sex, you need to wear a mask? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. There are probably people that do that. I, 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 I'm, I'm almost certain that there are. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but I think that this has been far more damaging to children than, than we'll ever really be able to suss out. Um, because it's an important part of development uh, when you're interacting, like of social development, to be able to see faces, there's a tremendous amount of uh, communication that goes on through facial expressions and so forth that has been lost. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, now actually probably seems an appropriate time for that clip, right? Yeah. Um, you know, as long as I'm talking about doing damage to children, um, I, I uh, this clip is from a school board meeting, um. I guess we'll just play the whole thing. It's about a minute and a half, so yeah. sorry, everybody. It's kind of a long clip. But um, but you're going to want to hear the whole thing. Yeah, and I don't know that I want to hear it again. Honestly. I don't know that I want to hear it again either, <laughs> but you're go- we're going <laughs> to. Yeah, um, but this is a, a guy who's, it, like, some of this you get as he's talking, but um, just to preface it, uh, this is a guy speaking in a school board meeting. Um, he's talking about the mask requirements on his 10-year-old daughter uh, for two years essentially. Um, and, uh, his 10 year old daughter is uh, a special needs child. Not entirely sure what the full range of that is, um, in this, in this case, but at least part of it is that she seems to have some sort of speech impediment as well. Yeah. Um, and this is him talking about, uh, talking at his local school board meeting. So here's the clip. Name a few people in her life that have harmed her and actively participated in holding her back and, stopping her progress and almost every one of them is in this room tonight we have seen two years of almost no growth missed goals goals removed my 10 year old daughter has kept these feelings to herself about how much she desperately wants to take her mask off when we told her that it may be possible on monday she cried tears this morning she got up before us and she started singing a song to her dolls about how excited she was that kids were finally going to be able to see her smile, that she was going to be able to see other kids' smiles, that kids would be able to understand her, and she would stop being picked on because they could not understand her through her mask because her speech has been delayed even more than her special needs. She is a strong girl, but when I heard her do that and I heard the things that she said, it broke me. I will never forgive myself for not fighting more. I feel that I have failed her for not fighting more. Well, you say that there's no lost learning. The vulnerable, like my daughter, have lost. And she won't get these things back. But you have failed them. Time. On behalf of the whole board, thank you for your comments. I'm just going to remind all individuals in this audience and in our overflow rooms... <clears throat> need to have on a mask. Okay. Now to be fair, I don't know if that last part was, I mean, it was definitely from the same school board meeting. I don't know if it was like something that, uh, she said, like the clip was edited down for time. For time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was something that she said right after they got things calmed down after that guy was done speaking, or if it was something that was later that was appended either way. I mean, like, um, it it kind of incredible. And like, I've, feels so bad for this little girl and you can hear the emotion in this guy and i think that his statement about um i will never forgive myself for not fighting more i think that that's going to be a feeling that spreads oh yeah no i i wholeheartedly agree as 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 more as we see more and more you know information coming out and Mm -hmm. things like that there's there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be questioning things yeah so, um, on the bright side, hopefully that means that they'll be more willing to stand up and fight this kind of stuff if it comes up in the future. Yeah. Hard to say though. Um, I think you will. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's, there's plenty of people and, and what's so frustrating about this is there's been plenty of people out there that have wanted to stand up and say stuff and haven't. Mm-hmm. And I do think you're right that there more of those people 
if this was to come around again, which I think it will. I don't think like so I think we're at the back end of this particular segment, but this the the president's been set for things like this. Mm-hmm. It's this is we're gonna end up in with another push towards some of these controls again. Um and I hope more people are willing to stand up and fight it. Yeah. I hope that in the end this has actually been a big libertarian moment. It could um, be. That people, uh, there's no way to ignore um, that uh, that you've been lied to. Yeah. Um, like, n- you know, that <laughs> we were talking it's, at the beginning that that's part of the, the people, that, the reason that people are hanging on so tight to yeah. some of this stuff is because they don't want to admit that. But it's unavoidable. Like somewhere along the way, yeah. y- you, you have to be able to assess and say, all right, I was lied to by my government. I was lied to by my media. I was yeah. lied to by public health professionals. Yeah. I was lied to by my school board. I well, was lied to by, uh, you know, a every great level. number of, of people that are, are supposed to be responsible for, for governing and for passing information on to me and for my, you know, um, welfare in the long term that, yeah. that I have entrusted to take care of me uh, and my welfare and to deliver the information that I need to make the right decisions for my life. And they all lied to me repeatedly. (laughs) And it seems knowingly in a lot of cases. Oh yeah. So, um, I, I hope that that really sticks with people and, uh, and creates the kind of, um, skepticism about, uh, authority that, that used to be, uh, ubiquitous in this country that doesn't seem to be anymore. No. Canadians are doing better than us. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> unreal, isn't it? Like, I am I, I am so proud. of Now, they had it worse than we did, too. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm really proud of the Canadians, and I'm really disappointed in the Americans that that didn't start here. Yeah, yeah. No, that should have been our thing. <laughs> and in fact, I, I've been complaining about that all along on this podcast when I was talking about protests that were going on in Europe and other places and saying, why is there not enough of this? I mean, it's not that there weren't protests going on in this country. They just weren't very big. Yeah. They weren't to the level of what we've, (laughs) particularly the current one with the Canadians. (laughs) Um, In the no agenda newsletter, they had a uh, picture from a UK protest of a guy holding a sign, uh, like a handwritten sign um, that said, uh, did um did the BBC's credibility die of COVID or with COVID? <laughs> Which I I thought I thought was really clever. <laughs> oh, that's 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 good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I hope that we have. I hope that a lot of people have woken up to what I would say has long been the fact that the people that you have entrusted to govern you don't care about you. Your well-being is really not that important to them. Well, just your vote. Oh, what? Absolutely. Going back to the whole how a libertarian how libertarians would respond had this COVID had been everything that it was claimed to be mm-hmm. and been as deadly as it was as it was proclaimed to be, people would have made the right decision. Yeah, like, there are plenty because and. Dude, I am as against authority as anybody and go against the grain as is out there. I promise you. Um, but when, like I say, when everything was, when all of that was happening in Italy, like I was all for like, Hey, if we need, we can't let that happen here. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, if, if it had been as bad as it would claim it, people would have made the right decision yeah. to, and, and the right decision would have been to to do what needed to be done whether mm-hmm. it be stay home or whatever and but keep keep your business going like you don't need a centralized power to make these decisions for you and yeah. this this whole episode has shown that a centralized power will make the wrong decisions mm-hmm. i mean think about uh some of the business opportunities that were lost and talking about innovation earlier like in without a centralized authority locking people down um, and, and entrusting people to make the best decisions for themselves. There have been plenty of people, like people that were in high-risk uh, populations, um, older people, people with uh, a lot of comorbidities, et cetera, yeah. uh, like generally unhealthy people, um, that the best decision for them would have been to lock themselves in, indoors for a while. Yeah. Uh, but then you could have had all these industries that grew up around that. You could have had businesses built around picking up and delivering helping those groceries people. helping and, those yeah, people yeah exactly so. um it, like 
community, this is, and, um, I, like, I'm not a big church goer or anything, but, uh, and I barely know my neighbors, so I, I'm, like, not a good example of this. Yeah. But I think that, um, that you're better off putting your trust in those kinds of communities. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think that those kinds of communities that, that I would also say, um, governments have been, um, uh, methodically trying to dismantle yeah because um, if, if are you're, important well if you're dependent upon your community you're not dependent upon your government right and there's a difference there mm-hmm. like a very oh, a very stark difference um and so that's the that's not an accident that your government is undermining these these establishments yeah um it's amazing to me how frequently people express an idea that suggests that they think that um People are just unwilling to take care of each other. In fact, I, I saw one today about not wearing masks and not getting vaccinated. Um, you know, if these people, uh, if this is a, a display of the kind of, of care for a community that these people have, then I worry for this country. And I, I think, well, I, you have it backwards. Yeah. Um, but the truth is that the people, for the most part, are interested in the communal good. Absolutely. Um, and they will make sacrifices when they see them necessary for yeah. the communal good. Um, they will make decisions to improve other people's lives at the expense of their own when they see when they see a, a need for it. Yeah. Um, if there's a real threat, people people want to help other people for the most part. And yeah. if you think that churches around this country would have allowed their elderly parishioners to starve to death at home yeah. or anything like through all of this because, you know, the government wasn't taking care of them, then yeah. you're just wrong. Well, and you, and you need to like <laughs> you need to be more positive about the world generally. If well, the, if and I that. I get the pessimistic view of the world because I but I just I just don't see that. Like, I understand mm-hmm. the skepticism that, you know, oh, I, you see all this bad stuff all the time. But the truth is, is the reason you see so much of that is because you watch the mainstream media. Yeah. And that's and that's what they promote. Like, mm-hmm. that's what gets the views. That's yeah. what gets the clicks. If it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, exactly. The, that, But that's not reality. Like, yeah. overwhelmingly, this country is good people. Mm-hmm. I just believe that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I think that there would it would be more true actually if the government was less involved. Well, and it would. It, 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 that's that's also the case. Like, yeah. You know. Um, if you have to depend on your community if you run into trouble. Yeah. Then that's a really big incentive to treat the people around you well. Yeah, absolutely. It feeds on itself. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Um, it's, it's a hell of an incentive not to be an asshole. Exactly. And it, it, because someday you, you know, your livelihood may depend on those people. And yeah. here's another thing that I'll add to that, to, to my more, you know, optimistic view of people's natures is that really, even if you're an asshole, yeah. somebody in that community is going to help you. Somebody will step up and step out, mm-hmm. you know, because, I, and that's the truth. I've, and I've, I've witnessed that too many times in my life. Where, it's, where somebody's helping somebody. Else. And I'm thinking like, dude, I wouldn't help that guy. <laughs> like, yeah. screw that guy. That guy's nothing but a jerk. Yeah. But in the other person that's stepping in is like, you know, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, he is. But. Yeah, you know. Yeah. He's still a person, mm-hmm. you know. So. Um, I don't know. I can't think of any other specifics that I want to address that I can that I can think of. Well, overall, though, the, the big thing is that centralized power just doesn't work and that, yeah. that's I, oh, I, actually let, let me let's go back to the education thing sure because uh because one of the points that i kind of wanted to to take a little bit of time with is that you in a, in a libertarian society yeah you wouldn't have a public education system to begin with <laughs> well that's true <laughs> um but all of the little private organizations the you know Church schools, community schools, homeschooling, like just everything that would grow that out of not having a public school. Yeah. Um, they would have all been able to make their own decisions. Yeah. And those those groups are probably far more interested in the well-being of the children than public school systems are. Far more. Without question, mm-hmm. far more. And even if you had a, a, a kind of in-between system like a school voucher system that, you know, a lot of libertarians promote. Yeah. Um, as, as at least a step towards a more privatized school, uh, you know, public or more privatized education system. Yeah. Um, like you can take that money to wherever you want. And so the schools that are scared and shut down, 
They're yeah. not getting your money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you'd be surprised what an incentive that is to keep schools open too. Oh, absolutely. And for teachers to show up and, and yeah. be a little less scared about what's going on. Yeah. Um, so like all the way around, just allowing people to make their own decisions about their lives, the, to do the things that they think are best for them yeah. is on the whole superior. Not in every case, I, I will say. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are there's, certainly there's situations. There's no but perfect system. No. Like you're never, and, and what we advocate for, I don't believe is a perfect system. No. Um, there's, there's plenty you of flaws in it. need perfect people for a perfect system. Yeah. And that doesn't system. exist. Yeah. And, and I, I concede that on every angle. I'm just saying it's better than what we have. Yeah. Like that's, that's my argument. My mm -hmm. argue, cause, cause people, anytime you start making the anarchist, um, you know, um, argument, like people start poking holes. Well, that's fine. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's perfect. Poke your holes. But yeah. I got way more, your system has way more holes than mine. Yeah. That's that's my retort back. Is yeah. is your system has more flaws than mine? So why don't we try mine? Yeah, uh, I mean, if you look back historically, you talk about the the wealth that has been bled out of this country um, because of these mandates and oh, yeah. shutdowns over the last couple of years. And if you look historically, I, I don't think that there's really been a a true like anarchist libertarian system no. um, that's been used. But the closest thing that you get is like in the, you know, like after the civil war, essentially in this yeah. country, yeah. um, or, uh, before the civil war <laughs> yeah. in, in this country isn't really a bad example either. But in, in both of those cases, um, you have the, the, the greatest generation of wealth, like creation of wealth in the history of the world. Yeah. In, in a system that was, had very little government interference yeah. Um, you had, uh, and these, you know, I'm not r trying to romanticize the past. These were tough there, times. There were, like, there, yeah. Well, it was, um, yeah. I mean, technology has made life immensely better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and more but comfortable. A, a lot of that grew out of people being able to choose, um, where they put their investments as well. Yeah. Um, and, and that's another argument that you run into, uh, about, um, having a governmentless system is like, well, who would fund the research into this, that, or the other? Like, what about NASA, right? Yeah. Um, hey, what about NASA question is being answered right now by Jeff Bezos and, uh, and what's his name? Um, why I can't believe Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what happens when you don't have uh, government uh, funding space exploration? Yeah. Wealthy individuals have an interest. Yeah. And exactly. they will fund space exploration. <laughs> I mean, they're looking to make a buck, no oh, yeah. doubt. Yeah. Um, but throughout history, you have uh, wealthy uh, patrons giving to the arts, giving yeah. to science. You don't have to have a central government doing it. There yeah. are people that just have an interest and have money to spend. Absolutely. And there you go. Yep. So um, that's a good place to end, probably. I think so. All right. Um, so next week is the convention. Are we going to try and get a podcast out before we go up there? Or are we just going to try and record up there? Ah, uh, I think we should do we both. Have, we have a, a house, so yeah, it'll be easier to, to record to there. Record. Yeah. That's true. Um, and like I say, I think, I think we should try to do a Thursday if we can mm -hmm. and, um, a little pre convention podcast Yeah, and then maybe something maybe towards the end of the convention yeah, after like Saturday night or yeah. something. All right. That sounds good to me. Well, um, um, either way you will get at least one podcast next week. Yeah. Uh, it may not be till the end of the weekend, you know, depending, but, yeah. um, you will get at least one podcast next week. And, uh, in the meantime, um, follow us on uh, Facebook, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, um, like, and share, Tell your friends, all that other stuff. All of those things help. Absolutely. Um, you know, help us get this message out there. And because uh, it's, you know, there, there's a few of us, but not enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and um, and we'll be back in the week, uh, so, you know, by the end of next weekend when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. <laughs>